Hey fellow Patriots, welcome to Hope for Survival YouTube. Thanks for tuning in for another video. Appreciate you coming back and appreciate your support. And welcome to the new Hope for Survival YouTube subscribers. Thanks for uh, subscribing. And um, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have a comment, please leave it below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button to uh, help us out. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment block below. This video is my analysis of the movie uh, that was released recently on Netflix called Leave the World Behind. And it has created a little bit of stir and uh, um, I tuned in and watched the movie about five o'clock this morning and uh, took a few notes and uh, gave it some thought and I uh, wanted to share them with you with my own analysis um, there is you've probably read a lot of the other analysis out there with varying opinions uh, keep in mind this is just my opinion and when doing analysis a lot of it the outcome of the analysis is based off of one's uh, past training skill sets um, and so forth so um, It's kind of like trying to find that one peanut M&M in a bag of regular M&Ms and you're weeding through the information looking for a golden nugget. So again, this is just my analysis and uh, you can take it for that. Okay, so uh, this is the analysis of Leave the World Behind. If you plan on watching this movie and haven't yet, you probably do not want to watch this video. All right, uh, because uh, it will probably give some of the movie away. So, um, so the movie is based on a cyber attack in the United States. Uh, the executive producers of the movie are Barack and Michelle Obama for Netflix. That's the former president and first lady. The movie is about two hours and 20 minutes long. It stars Ethan Hawke, Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon. Uh, it has heavy profanity in it and it has a lot of racial overtones through most of the movie. Previous analysis of the movie, some of the comments are it was scary, poor representation of preppers, uh, racism, poor acting, and was the former president who had access to our nation's highest secrets sending a message through the movie? And that's probably the biggest question out there. So my analysis. Racial overtones, yes. I think back to the original beer summit after Barack Obama assumed office. Uh, the overtones in the movie could have been on purpose because of the executive producer's attitude or in fact expected in this type of a situation. The storyline had middle class white Americans renting a rural home for the weekend when the cyber attack occurred. The wealthy black homeowner showed up in the middle of the night because they fled the city to return to the home. The white renters didn't want to believe the black man owned the home, which depicted a racist white attitude towards the homeowner who remained calm through the ordeal. If relationships aren't already established between black and white individuals, I do believe this will be witnessed more than not because of preconceived attitudes between races, especially around large cities and the suburbs under the category of intelligence. Conspiracy versus non-conspiracy. 
The example of individual mindset. Those who pay attention daily speak about things the individual not paying attention will call a conspiracy. This creates tension, mistrust, and a waste of valuable time. The black family lived a more global life, wealthy and connected to people in power. When they shared possible intelligence from pre-event conversations, the white family called it a conspiracy or accused the black connected man of holding out on information. The white family lived in the city day to day and knew little about world events or things occurring in the news. Having this knowledge could, could have aided in the current situation of need for intelligence. Other than federal emergency alerts, no news was available. So the black and white family found life to be difficult because they didn't know neighbors. At this point, the homeowner, the wealthy black man and his daughter, as well as the four white weekend renters from the city were all housing in the same home. <clears throat> um, again, the situation uh, was tense because um, the renters for the weekend didn't know the neighbors and the gentleman um, who owned the home who did not live there full time uh, knew very few neighbors. The black gentleman who owned the home the movie was centered around only knew two neighbors. One was a weekend visitor to the rural home and the other was a contractor who helped the black man remodel his home earlier and he was also the prepper in the movie, Kevin Bacon. Both neighbors men, uh, mentioned live close by. Bottom line, without pre-existing relationships built to the network level in the neighborhood and community pre-event, getting timely and accurate intel uh, will be minimum to, to none. If not pre-established, it will be hard to establish during, a post and, during and post-event without investing time. The movie portrayed the non-prepared people more out of touch with what was taking place than the lone prepper. Intel is not just what you hear, shared verbally, but what you see around you and what message it may be sending. In the movie, visual intelligence occurred often even though the actors noticed it, they didn't know how to apply it. Example. The homeowner found a flock of flamingos in their pool. They had left the nearby lake in ocean setting for some reason. The owner stated it was the first time this had ever happened. Yet there was no alert in the mindset to why. Was it radiation or microwave weapons chasing the birds from their typical home? Another example was a herd of deer that seemed lost and confused. The herd was at least a hundred strong or more. They ran through the fields lost and dazed and apparently confused. In one scene the deer seemed aggressive towards humans acting totally out of character. Why? Though noticed, there was no discussion in the storyline to why. Was it microwave weapons causing the problem? Another example. In one scene a couple of characters walked through a field and noticed an opening in the trees to where they could see across the harbor to see New York City. The city was smoke filled and showered uh, by large plume, possible nuclear, and fighter jets conducting strafing uh, runs over the city dropping bombs. Yet when they returned to the house they didn't mention um, what they witnessed over the city. Based on the scenarios, it is possible radi radiation is now a threat depending on wind direction. No discussion at all occurred from anyone. The only mention a government message about sheltering in place. Um, this depicts what a prepper would believe about the 90% of the unprepared, dependent upon someone else. So through these, through these three examples of the storyline, there were visual cases of possible evidence uh, of things that were not visual, i.e. radiation, um, or the microwave weapons as a possibility that was causing the animals to 
uh, act out of their norm and disrupt their habitat. Rule of law versus without rule of law. The main characters, unprepared, had no clue for most part of a collapse and civil breakdown. The black gentleman who was more worldly connected knew these stages but was in denial. The household of six people, two homeowners and four guests together had one gun. Again, though the black gentleman had purchased the semi-rural home and had made mental notes of warnings made to him by connected people, no security measures had been taken. His faith in man to do, to, to do good in times of need overrode his common sense. This was more evident late in the movie when the black gentleman shared intel he was aware of that was briefed to him pre-event on three stages on the three stages it would take to break down America and was briefed to him by a high-ranking Pentagon official. Was this point a storyline or planted by the executive producer? Communications Non-existent, cell phones didn't work, GPS didn't work, and there was no discussion on paper maps. Satellite phone discovered at the neighbor's home didn't work. Hmm. A sat phone will not work during these conditions unless the recipient being called has their phone turned on. Calling from a satellite phone to a regular cell phone when the tower, cell towers are down, you're not going to get a call through. Hence, a comm plan with a communication schedule, hour of checks or calls, and rotation of channels if using a radio such as a ham um, would be prudent. Texting. In some instances when a cell tower is down, texting can occur as long as the tower has power uh, or battery backup. The only mention of texting was the black gentleman trying to text his wife who was on an international trip in Morocco when the cyber attack occurred. Even though the basis of the movie was the cyber attack and unprepared citizens, the movie stresses the importance of self-reliance plans and preparedness 24-7. The whole event of the cyber attack basically occurred. There was no build-up to it uh, that was that was explained or depicted in the storyline uh, up front. It basically occurred uh, within a couple hours. Again, the need for having a plan in place for wherever you may be. Children. The movie included two teenage children around 16 and 13. The older was a typical boy with hormones at 16 and the younger was his sister who was infatuated with the old show Friends. So much so when she lost her ability to watch the final show of the sequel, she started going through depression. Her world was on the net and not reality. Coping ability was minimal and is portrayed as such and something we should expect from uninvolved children. Bartering. One example, unprepared, uh, five of the unprepared needed amoxicillin desperately for the suffering teen boy who was believe, believed to be suffering radiation impacts from a microwave weapon and his teeth started falling out and he had mouth bleeding. They went to the contractor prepper, Kevin Bacon, house expecting a friendly encounter. They didn't expect what they found. A hostile prepper telling them to get off his porch at gunpoint. The black gentleman had previously hired the prepper to work on his home was astounded at the treatment. He begged the prepper for help and when again was told to leave the property. A shouting match ensued and guns flashed and pointed at each other. The father of the teen jumped between the two gunmen and offered to pay for the medicine. The prepper stated it was a legal form of bartering and charged $1,000 for eight amoxicillin pills. The teen boy had also received a nasty bug bite and had a fever that night. This is prior to them going to get the amoxicillin. There was no mention of the bug bite possibly causing uh, the infection and the problem. It was automatically assumed 
that it was from the microwave weapons. There was also no mention of the wealthy homeowner having any medical supplies. This is probably an accurate assumption. The bunker. In a late scene, the, t the teen girl wanders off to a home rumored to have a bunker. She finds the home, which is another getaway mansion and is unoccupied at the time of her arrival. She breaks into the home and the first scene shows the girl at a kitchen table eating Cocoa Puffs, chips, soda pop, and chocolate candy. In another analysis that I uh, watched prior to watching this movie, um, there was some criticism of the bunker having this much junk food. Well, the reality is she found this junk food in the cabinets upstairs and that's what she was consuming before she actually went to the bunker to where all the prepper food was at. Once full, she wanders into the house and finds the basement bunker. She pulls on the vault door handle which is unlocked and open. Not a reality. She wanders in with amazement. The bunker has multiple aquariums being used with heat lamps to grow greens. The bunker also has beds, kitchen area living, and a large living room and a large wall-mounted television. It was surrounded by a thousand or more DVDs. She hit the jackpot. She sees a DVD of the final season of Friends and puts it in the DVD player and relaxes in a recliner. She is back to her own world and escapes reality for the moment. As far-fetched as that seems, I do believe um, that could be pretty pretty accurate. Um, in a world of unknown stresses, pressures, and tension, um, I do believe a teenager would be looking for an escape to go back to what was norm for them. So, in my conclusion. Prior reviewed analysis missed the mark in some areas because they watched the movie from a prepper perspective versus stepping back with a neutral analysis. Watching the movie from the perspective of what the movie offered was good, but was more important to look for what message the executive producers put in the movie. Remember, the point was not to be a movie critic. It was looking for possible intel to compare to our real world life. Was Obama planting a seed to say, in the event of a cyber attack, there is no plan and we are on our own? Was he stating the consequences of a cyber attack and revealing the three-step plan to bring down America? Some prior analysis wrote the movie off because of different reasons such as poor acting, profanity, script, and the fact 80% of the movie was filmed in a single home. Good analysis may be hours of video or thousands of pages to read or even interviewing a poor informant, but it may be one word, a phrase, name, or point in the information that is the clue or needed point to support the analysis the person is looking for. Why was the movie Leave the World Behind, time for release, when 10 or more news agencies in the Pentagon are reporting a high threat of a cyber attack? Is that a coincidence? Or, as in past, under the Obama administration and the current administration, uh, the White House being in bed with the media, and was the media um, instructed to start reporting on this threat at the same time the movie was released to drive up viewership for Netflix. Crappy movie or not, there's enough tidbits and head scratchers in this movie for one to give serious consideration to things one knows and then plan it in this movie to make it work um, realistically. Why, at the time of the heightened fear and threats, would a former president release a movie on a cyber attack on the nation? He served as president and commander in chief. That, to me, is the question someone should be asking. So, um, I wasn't watching the movie 
uh, because it had a prepper flavor. A lot of the prepper uh, platforms were recommending go watch this movie. And then, you know, because of a dislike for uh, the former president, there was a lot of profanity-laced reasons why people would not watch it. They wouldn't support it. But personally, uh, I'm living in real life, and I'm looking for anything and everything that could possibly be a nugget to support uh, real world, real world planning and uh, things that we should be looking for. We should plan for every possible event the best that we can um, every day, okay? And keep our head on a swivel. Um, but just like an EMP, a cyber attack could be one of those events that potentially uh, could leave us stranded, possibly. Uh, in this movie, all the vehicles worked. Uh, they never ran out of gas. They were driving all over the place. Um, um, it was also, also interesting in one scene in the movie when uh, the white father uh, left the home and was trying to go look for intel and information. <clears throat> he hadn't connected yet that his GPS wouldn't work. He just thought he didn't have a signal. And he took off driving and wandering around. Uh, to the point that he didn't know the area and he ended up getting lost. Um, so he never made it to a store. Um, in the movie of the of these unprepared people, there was no discussion on uh, trying to obtain more food or uh, cut back on the food that was available which would probably be minimal since it was a weekend dwelling place and uh, the only real preparedness step that was witnessed by the unprepared six in the home was when the white father was filling up a bathtub full of water um, to preserve water he never stated why or if utilities go out that they won't have water even though they had a swimming pool there was no mention of the pool water um, or uh, all he stated was he had heard somewhere in the past that it was important to fill the bathtub full of water and that was kind of the end of it so uh, you have to ask in a movie like this how much can they truly portray? Grab this movie was two hours and twenty minutes, and eighty percent of the movie took place in one house. If you really dissect the whole movie, with it being eighty percent in one house, there was more conflict and debate between racial tensions than actually discussion on the cyber attack or what did it mean or how would it impact them uh, so you got to kind of pull that from it as well um, was the message possibly stating that in the event of a disaster of this type there's going to be a lot of racial tensions was the message there's no one coming for you uh, was the message if there's a cyber attack uh, the country the government won't sustain and our nation will be invaded um, you can you could you could possibly assume multiple scenarios but it was very clear, uh, two, two points, it was very clear. One was when the black gentleman shared what a Pentagon official had shared with him in reference and he stated the three steps um, that would take place to bring our nation down before uh, an invasion because the government would collapse. And the second item was the high level of 
racial tension in the house throughout the movie. So there you have it. Um, check it out if you want. Again, it's heavy in profanity. Uh, a lot of F-bombs. Uh, actually, there's more F-bombs. Probably that's 95% of the profanity being used. So uh, we're all adults, but you'll have to pick. So uh, anyway, um, on a uh, thousand foot scale, I just find it very interesting that a former president would release a movie at a time when our nation is at the point that it's at right now, involved in multiple wars, and um, um, a lot of the nations flat on its back have not recovered from the air virus. So uh, that's just my thoughts. So. Uh, um, it's what I think and um, it won't get you a pack of bubble gum at the corner candy store so anyway again if you uh, like hit like leave comments and uh, if you haven't subscribed um, please consider doing so share this information with others and uh, uh, hope to see you back soon Lord willing and have a great week leading up to Christmas. Stay safe and healthy. Be blessed. Bravo Echo out. Thank you for checking out the Hope for Survival YouTube channel. If you are new to Hope for Survival, you can check out our books at our webpage. Book one, which is Hope for Survival, getting you prepared for disasters, and book two, Hope for Survival, the mindset, are both available for order on the website. We also offer the Hope for Survival football stick, which is a memory stick set up as a digital filing cabinet with files already loaded on there for you to digitally copy items such as a deeds, auto um, transcript uh, for ownership, wills, living wills, loans, banking information, Items that if your home burned down or you had some form of a disaster, you could have all of your important papers already digitally filed on this stick. All you, sim all you do is simply drag the digital file into the appropriate uh, preset folder so that you'll have it in the event of a disaster. You have to flee your home in a hurry. Or also if you're away from home and you need critical information that's personal, if you have your memory stick with you, you can put it in your computer and pull that information up wherever you may be. Again, you can find these items uh, to order at our website, https www.hopeforsurvival.com or you can email me at preparedness101 at protonmail.com and I will try to help you out. Again, Thanks for checking out the Hope for Survival YouTube channel. Hope to see you again.